Welcome to Matter Warriors. I don't madness. I'm your host, Matter Warrior, and today will be a episode where I discuss a couple of different things, and then I'm going to go on to an interview with a band that is out of New Jersey, and they are a th- uh, kind of a newer thrash band, but really have a unique thing going for them called Behind the Horror, and I did this uh, interview Sunday of this week, so... Anyways, I was going to go into, I was going to do the news segment, but I decided this will be more interesting and entertaining. So I've talked about this on the show before and in many videos that I've done on other platforms as well. So I wanted to read this interview. Well, when I was a kid, I actually, I don't know if I had a subscription to this magazine or not, but I read this magazine a lot called Guitar for the Practicing Musician. And it you know it has like has lessons uh i think it's just called guitar now but um it has lessons and it has like tablature and columns and all this stuff and all this cool stuff right so at a certain point if i think i i think i actually definitely got into it after the grunge thing and stuff so at a certain point uh they didn't know what to cover in the 90s because what, what had happened is the grunge and alternative thing had took an o- taken over. So they had these, you know, you would have Steve Vai on the cover and then, you know, half would half of the tabs would be like Nirvana songs. It'd be just totally like out of sync with, what, I mean, they really didn't have like a unifying message at the time as far as what they thought, you know, as far as guitar goes. Of course, that's, I mean, that's to be expected. I'm not... I'm not criticizing him for having Nirvana or, you know, Steve Vai or whatever. But there was a clash between these two worlds because, you know, you have, for one thing, this 80s and even early 90s kind of, like, emphasis on shred and, you know, like, virtuosity and people that could play at a certain level. Just as a note as a guitar player, um, I think... There's some things that are actually more like in the old school 70s, 60s way of playing that is actually challenging to a, a, a large extent. I mean, take Jimi Hendrix, like a lot of this stuff is actually pretty challenging, even for, a, especially for a person, like if you just learned like guitar solos, how to like do sweep arpeggios and all this stuff and playing like Hendrix where he's playing these like different types of chord, uh, broken chords as a column and like different types of uh, these, the, these like this lead rhythm kind of combination that he did. It's actually kind of challenging. So I, you know, I'm speaking of someone I know intimately, <laughs> actually myself, of course. I've had, you know, some of that stuff is challenging. It, it, it definitely is. So let's not, let's not uh, say that it's all like, it's either like, oh, 1976 guitar was, way less challenging than 1989 like shred and not it's not necess- it's just the techniques are different um of course they play faster so to speak on the notes in you know 1989 that said you know there are some challenging moments back in the day so what happened was and i've talked about this before is the alternative thing the alternative thing is kind of a. Uh, a lot of the alternative thing was these guys that grew up in the 70s and they liked they did like Kiss or Black Sabbath and stuff, but the 80s kind of alienated them for various reasons, for whatever reason, right? And some of them were more hip, of the hippie-ish variety, like Blind Melon, or, you know, they were just more like punks that were into kind of avant-garde stuff, like uh, Kim Thale of Soundgarden comes to mind, even though he did like some metal, too, even back then. So he wasn't like these guys are in this, in this interview. But the segment I'm, that I'm going to read, it, it comes from a a segment that they watched different videos and then they would judge the videos and say what they had to say so and i do know this is actually on the blind melon forum which is funny because um one of the guitarists actually responded to this like more recently and he's he's kind of apologetic and you know kind of you know kind of like Oh, yeah, you know, that's just how we felt back then, all that shit. I'm, I'd rather have someone, so I'd rather have him say, like, almost like, I'm not saying say like admitting to a, a, a crime or something, but I'd rather have someone, like, 
come out and say, oh yeah, this is just how we were seeing things at the time. And, you know, I'd rather have them do that than just deny that they ever, ever were like this because that's what a lot of musicians do now. You know, have, you have these, these Generation X musicians usually who do metal projects or they, they like, they say they like metal now and they, they deny that they ever, never did, you know, never did or always did. And it was the cool thing. It was the cool thing back then to bash on metal, especially 80s metal. And I mean, this is like exhibit A of that whole mentality back then in a certain way. And it's kind of funny because, you know, you have, like I said, they, they made exceptions like Kiss, Aerosmith, if you count them as metal. Uh, sometimes they made a Motorhead exception once in a while. I read that too. But, you know, it was kind of like, you know, they didn't like uh, anything past 76 and they didn't really like metal in general except for a couple of bands. So I'm going to read this and I'm going to give my thoughts on it because I think it's absolutely hilariously cringe. Um, you know, it, 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 it makes me mad in retrospect, like, because living back then was difficult being into metal. At the same time, I think it's pretty hilarious, too. Um, so Guitar for the Practicing Musician, January 1994. Uh, Pull Me Under, Images and Words. So I don't know these guys. I think they're guitarists of Blind Melon. Christopher, this could be metal at any moment. I'm just warning any everybody. Rogers, either that or it could build up into a power ballad. Christopher, I feel like we might have to excuse ourselves here for a second. We might have to leave. Uh, Rogers, this is one of those guitar sounds that when he hits a note, about a million lights jump up on his guitar rig. Of course, I'm referring to John Petrucci. Christopher, any minute now, there's going to be a squealy. Rogers, is this like Queensryche? Christopher, if it is, let's turn it off right away because I hate that band. Rogers, hate it. This is the kind of music you listen to right when you start to get your pubic hairs. Christopher, I can't even be fair to this music. I hate it so bad. I can't even sit through one song. I know I'm not being fair, but this, I think this is complete garbage. That sort of guitar playing is just stupid. Rogers, if I want to hear, this is where it gets really funny and ridiculous. If I want to hear a metal band, I really like Old Black Sabbath and Soundgarden, heavy bands with brains. If I were listening to an angry metal band, I would be more into Rage Against the Machine or Sugar. I feel like that, I like that Sugar record a lot. I like Sonic Youth a lot. That's heavy guitar-based music that I listen to. Christopher, playing fast for the sake of fast is hideous. I hate that whole mentality of sitting around playing scales and cock rock crap. Rogers, I heard some squealies. I really don't like that sound either. I'm not into those guitar sounds. When I hear that stuff, I, feel, I get feeling squeamish. Jesus Christ. Guitar, guitar magazine. That was Dream Theater. Christopher, we'll remember not to buy that record. I bet they have really nice hair. Now I'm being mean. Rogers, this is just our opinion. There's a lot of people that like Dream Theater, and that's fine. They get off on it. Good for them. They'll probably hate us. Maybe they won't. Christopher, they probably do because we sound like we're playing sloppy. But that's all right. That's a different thing. We're coming from a different space. Rogers, in no way do we condemn this sort of music. These people have a right to exist. Christopher, just keep it the hell away from us. Okay, so I'm going to break this down, this whole uh, conversation here. And I read it, actually. This is... I cannot fucking believe this, but I actually owned this magazine at one point. I, I swear, it's insane. Just like I did, I believe, and I do remember, and I have to get back up on this if someone even remembers this from back in the day. I may have opened, or I'm open, I may have owned the infamous Crane with uh, the black metal bands and stuff, which is like worth like 800 or $900 now, but... If you know what I'm talking about, like the early uh, second wave black metal scene when they, you know, were burning churches and all that, 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 that infamous magazine. I think Burzum's on the cover. I may have owned that because I remember in high school having this like discussion about black metal and then I brought this Sam Hain uh, tape in. He's like, that's blood metal because I didn't know what black metal was other than that Karain thing. This, this kid in high school in French class. So, or was it was it high school? Shit, I can't even remember how old I am. <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to get back to uh, discussing this ridiculous article. Um, 
so this is kind of how the if if people want to like understand what I'm where I'm coming from when I talk about like how like just plain bigoted and weird the 90s were about metal it's this is like exhibit a on that so like just what does he say like he says it's stupid cock rock crap he says and you know i like a lot of bands i do like dream theater but you know there's there's things i don't like about them too but like just like him bashing queens right that's those them some fighting words because i love queens right one of my favorite bands but like saying he has to leave and like all this stuff it's just insane like feeling squeamish you know it's just like what you know it's just like really like extreme to say all those things about this band and it, by the way i actually saw blind melon live which is funny i saw it with a relative back in the 90s and then i also saw dream theater a bunch of times too but um you know, I mean, to be fair, who has the who has the career now? You know, I mean, Dream Theater, even though, well, we won't go into some of the rumors and stuff, but, you know, they have the career now, and that's the, that's the way it goes. They they outlast, and same with hair metal outlasting these guys too. Who? What's the biggest show right now? The Motley Crue show, right? It's crazy, but it's true. And you know, Eddie Vedder can can whine all he wants, but. Anyways, I like I like grunge. I love the first. I actually do love the first Pearl Jam. Now I used to not like it as I used to like it, just like it. But listening to now, and I, you know, I even like the Blind Melon album. They had like a couple albums, but you know, and my relative he had uh, he had the demo from he he actually had their demo before. And you know, the funny thing is Shannon Hoon was really good friends with uh, Axl Rose, so it's kind of funny. But I'm gonna break this down. So first of all. It's it's something you would expect from someone that plays this, you know, back then played this style of music because they're kind of a jam band, alternative jam band with a little bit of uh, edgier kind of style. This this blind blind melon were kind of like that, even though their hit was a ballad basically. But they they were kind of a hippie-ish, like '70s kind of band. You know, that's that's the way they played. So. That I guess that whole style, you know, that that Berkeley shred thing was definitely alien to them. But this is just indicative of how people thought in the '90s about metal. So, like for example, uh, this guitarist he says, "I hate that whole mentality of sitting around playing scales and cock rock crap." Now, a lot of stuff was lumped in together as cock rock. I mean, back then they were like goth goths that called metallica cock rock you know and cock rock me meaning you know maybe not from coming from like a like sexually explicit lyrics but like just like trying to be like the most macho with a guitar like knowing the you know playing the fastest like it's a competition i i think i get what they're trying to they were trying to say i didn't back then i was pretty offended when i got back into metal you know in the 90s so you know <laughs> so here we go so this is really erroneous all right, so Black Sabbath and Soundgarden, heavy bands with brains. I mean, Queensryche is a heavy band with brains, but just not the, you know, they're they're more sludgy. Black Sabbath and Soundgarden more sludgy and more, you know, more 70-ish, 70s-ish and more sloppy than, I mean, they're both, you know, classic bands. I'm just saying, you know, Queensryche's just too, like, clean for them. Um, and he says Rage Against the Machine or Sugar. I think Sugar was a Bob Mould band, if I remember correctly, which is who is a member of Husker Du, who I actually do like because I love their Zen Arcade album. So the Sugar side project or, I don't, or that project, I don't think it's definitely not metal. I don't know why he mentions it. Sonic Youth were never metal. So he just like tries to like search his brain for something that's heavier than he likes. And he kind of comes up short, so he has to pick them. It's pretty, it's pretty cringe. So squealies, he's referring to pitch harmonics. Um, yeah, so it's like, uh, I don't know. It, it's just, it's just indicative of that attitude back then. And you know, some some of that attitude is it it cleanses it it cleanses the palate and cleanses a lot of the things that were excessive about the '80s, like, you know. Some, sometimes it's good to have a raw production or, you know, go against like the, the just the, the overproduction of the 80s or the ridiculous trends that were in the 80s. But the pendulum swung way too far. 
It definitely did. That's just my opinion. Because it's just like, now we can sit back and say, oh, you know, there's kids that are that like Nirvana and they like uh, Dream Theater, both. You know, why, why does it have to be one or the other? You know, you, you can like different things about different bands for different reasons. So these guys, it's just like, it, it was a ridiculous moment in, in time that we were living through because it went to such an extreme so it's like oh my god there's pinch harmonics but i'm willing to bet like these guys now like would say oh i love the first few iron maiden albums or something like that something they would have denied back then oh i like the the queen's reich ep or something like that oh i always listen to that you know it's like i bet they'd be willing to say that so it's this is actually a thread on the blind melon forum and they're kind of talking about that and talking about the vocals Say the '80s vocals, which eh, I don't know. They're kind of. Yeah, he reminds me of Dennis DeYoung. I don't think that's '80s. I think that's actually '70s, ironically enough. Oh, uh, let's see. I'm gonna try to see if there's any. Uh... So this is the the worst part about it. I don't like the comment. This is what you listen to when you get your pubic hair. So it's like, for a lot of people back then, I'm just I'm speaking from like anecdotal uh, experience. What would happen is a kid would get into like Slayer or like even like Iron Maiden or Judas Priest or Dio or something earlier in the decade in the 80s. And then like they would mature, you know, and get into like the Pogues or whatever the fuck, like by college and then be like, oh, yeah, that was just stuff I listened to in, in, uh, when I was a kid, you know, Iron Maiden. So I think he's referring to that kind of like attitude that that happened. That was more of a thing back then that we're we're. A, a person would listen to metal when they're more of a juvenile, you know, more in their younger years and stuff. And then, like, they go to college or whatever. I mean, it's a very middle class thing, like this whole this whole attitude, like a very almost like upper middle class thing. <laughs> like, oh, those those losers that are uh, in the trailer park listen to Metallica or whatever. You know, it's like it has a lot of elements of that. And I, I'm not going to get political about it, but it definitely has like this snooty, smug attitude about it. And that's what really pissed me off about all that, that whole movement of grunge and alternative. It's like, oh, all of a sudden we got to discount everything that happened for 15 years in music, you know, because <laughs> or except for punk, you know, except for punk and post-punk. That's it. That's the only things that we can acknowledge. But I like it all. I don't care. You know, I like I like Dream Theater. I There's, you know. There's bands in that genre that I do like more. I'll just say that. But, you know, it's just, it's really dumb. And I like Soundgarden. I like S Sabbath, of course. But it's pretty dumb to mention Sugar and Sonic Youth. Um, uh, I don't like this, this, this squealies, squealies. That's pinch harmonics, by the way. Of course, I already mentioned that. So, yeah, that's pretty much what I have to say about this ridiculous uh, article. I think, actually, John Petrucci did play with a rack at the time. I don't think it lit lit up like they said it didn't doesn't light up the guitar rig or whatever like who knows i don't even remember what his uh, rig what his rig did back then i'd have to watch more live videos it's it's pretty uh pretty silly stuff in a way like but in a way it's like the backlash against metal was was really really uh prominent at the time and that's, you know, thankfully it's over, but I still, I, I admit, I still have, like, I wouldn't call it PTSD because that really discounts people that, or that's kind of insulting to people that actually have PTSD. But, like, it's like I still have, like, a, the remnants of that lasting, like, sore from that period of time, people being such dicks about stuff. And this, I think, okay, this Rogers guy, I think he actually responds at some point in this, in this thread, but I can't see, maybe it's on a different forum. Um, I'm just trying to see. I think he did say something. There we go. Oh wow! Here we go. I'm going to read this response from a blind melon from a former blind melon member. I've got <laughs> this Rogers guy. I've gotten countless. This is from 2006, by the way. So I mean, this 
it's kind of ridiculous to read this. I just thought it would be funny to, to mention this because it's kind of something, uh, it's a little minutia that m people might not have heard about, you know, back in the day. And it just, it kind of goes with the narrative of like this, how bad the 90s were. And I, I really like talking about that subject because I just think it's endlessly fascinating. So for some reason, I really like talking about that. I may talk about it more with, with some guests too in the future. So I'm going to read this, uh, this response. I've gotten countless emails <laughs> over the years about this interview. We did this for a guitar magazine. The journalist brought in a bunch of tapes and played snippets for us and asked, for us, asked us for humorous comments on them. And being somewhat young, drunk, and stupid, we com complied. I think Dream Theater fans look forward to pissing on my grave. <laughs> One of those moments you'd like to take back, I've got plenty of those. See, this is the whole thing that I'm trying to say like exactly what i predicted him saying like oh yeah well i mean i think he's a little bit better than some of these guys that just like say just kind of are in denial like i i give him props for that that response like some of these guys are like like pretending that they always liked metal and they never said these comments in the 90s and stuff and like they they were always a metal head and like oh it's cool it's on netflix there's like metal lords and like like uh, Stranger Things, they have metalheads, man. It's it's cool. I love metal. Uh. You know, it's like it's like this ridiculously like hip thing now among people. But back in the '90s, you were a fucking like this. Just the like the extr extreme. Okay, I I talk about like I know it was sort of a joke. These guys and their ironic, you know, kind of ir irony is common amongst the Generation X people and stuff. But like this whole thing's just like. It's really like, just imagine if they were more serious, but they said the same stuff. And that's how some people were about metal. Like, oh my God, it's metal. It's so bad. Oh my God. You know, you're such a hasher. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's pretty funny. So anyways, I'm going to get to this interview. Uh, I would definitely check out this band. I'm going to put links in the description of this, of this on YouTube and Spotify and all that as far as, as far as to this band's music, uh, Really thank the two guys for doing this interview, and here we go. Oh, this is Metal Warrior, Metal Warriors, Metal Madness. This is uh, today we are going to be interviewing the band Behind the Horror. They are a thrash band originally from Brazil who have moved to the United States. Um, and we're speaking to the whole band right now, as far as I know, we're just a two piece right now, right? Yeah, Metal Duel. Oh, okay. So tell me all about how Behind the Horror started and what, you know, what kind of was the impetus to form the band? All right. First of all, thank you so much for having us. It's been a, a pleasure to have you here and talk to all you guys. And my name is Gabriel and this is my brother. My name is Lucas. I'm the drummer. Our our voices sound like, so I don't know if it's going to be like very... Difficult to see who to separate who who is who, but yeah. um, oh, I would just say your name be, or say this is uh, you know Gabriel speaking or whatnot. So yeah, but uh, everything started in like since because we're brothers and we're like in the same household. Basically, everything started all together when we I got my first guitar from my my uncle, and then we met. Black Sabbath and Megadeth, and then we started playing shows since it was like 14, 13. My brother was like even younger, like, yeah, I was like 11 when we did our first concert because we have like a, a two, three years of the of uh age apart. And um, yeah, was... and in central Brazil and Brazil, like, like generally, the scenes. Uh, living the 2000 was kind of living in like in the 80s you always listen to like the 80s band trash metal every band by playing like 80s trash metal death metal and that was pretty much the the whole scene in like this town in central brazil and you're just those kids trying to fit up with the, the old guys doing like all that shit yeah, with the the old bands trying to get the the gigs with them, but you know, they always kick out <laughs> the little ones and they make fun of us. Like the first concert we did, 
after we finished the first song, the whole place laughed. But oh. uh, they they were like because I was eleven at the time, and they started like laughing something I don't know joyfully, joyfully yeah, like, like some kids doing the, the same thing. New generation <laughs> of the town uh, standing up for the the cause, and the the whole thing was we were embraced. And since after that concert, we play a lot of more concerts with the local bands over there, and we start growing and growing. And then we got like to the US to play in a festival when the South by Southwest was um was happening. It wasn't a, like a South by Southwest event, but it was like in Austin it happens a lot of stuff around. Oh, yeah. one of, like some guys saw us playing like there and like, oh you guys gonna come play here. And since then We we just decided to stay. My brother stay like longer than me, but then like it's been like five to seven years that we're like in the U.S. and now here, starting every, everything again, uh, like a local band, uh, like a New Jersey local band. Yeah, it's been challenging because you know when you start as a local band, you have uh your friends from high school and everything else who grew up in the area. And that's been one of the biggest challenges for us because we don't have that, you know, that friend, friendship, hood connection, you know. So it's kind of challenging to get people to go watch us. And But it's very exciting because everybody is very open. Like, yeah, to it's totally different. Bands that so. coming and you know, like the local scene, it's still alive. It's very, very the nice to like brief different airs but in the same kind of sort of speaking the same language culturally yeah so how do i mean how was the uh, american scene what is it like compared to the brazilian one then like what was an average show like there compared to here well i'd say especially here because there's We were living in central Brazil. It's very different from like São Paulo or Rio, whereas you have like it's kind of the north northeast for here. But it's very very alike because you have like basically the same mindset for what's happening. You have like the that local bars with that character the characteristically characteristically here with that characteristics of like the underground venues like the smell of beer and like... <laughs> here there's one thing there's there's more people involved in the whole process of doing a concert because in brazil it's just the bands and the place you get a, a lot of bands everyone help a little bit in the uh doing the promoting the concert and uh equipment and do this and that here you get in contact with the book agent on in any level and you get a you get a gig or you can get a gig by yourself but uh everything is organized since the ticket sales and uh yeah you have more gears working like even on the local level scene and in brazil it's kind of like do it do it yourself everything there's no like chain of service or people doing this and that oh wow so as far as the music goes like how did it evolve into what it is today because i i do notice there's a lot of groove like there's some groove i don't know about groove metal but there, there's some grooves in there for sure uh thrash and even prog influences and done in a very tasteful way um how do you How did you get to that point and how do you achieve that balance that it has that I did notice that you have? I think uh it's part of the 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 process in a in the in an essential way because you you describe all of our biggest influences when it comes to listen Like, we love thrash metal, we love prog metal, like Dream Theater, Metallica, and Black Sabbath. It's kind of all in the same level with death, like bands that very influenced us. And by the time we were, like, besides the 
those like root influences. We have like Lamb of God, that was a band that was happening at Sepultura. the moment. And that was the new stuff that we brought, like kind of the groovy metal that what like, Lamb of God Lamb of God was doing like 2004, 2002. And it's mo- it's basically that was happening on that time when like we're f- starting the band and with those like legendary influences that we've like brought from the from the eighties and nineties, basically that. Still there? Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. It just got really silent for a second. <laughs> so, and, I and think how did you get? Oh, Oh, I was trying to like now that you mentioned, like figure out when everything started. And And, uh, it was because my brother has like different influences than me too, and that's like the embryo of the band. Yeah, because we we meet together when the subject it's metal, but as a musician, we listen to a lot of stuff. And when you started playing or jamming, automatically those things comes up into your mind those other influences and you mix that automatically and that's where we get all we we write down you know it's a mix of um different tastes and uh and not forgot to mentioning sepultura is a very big influence on us um we always play the covers play covers of sepultura and look up for them like it's a it's a band from our country. It's the band. Brotherhood stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's very similar, touchful in, in, in a lot of meanings for us. Like being brothers, doing like cool shit, and like playing sick riffs. That's that's what's all about. Well, they're certainly a legendary band, so that's pretty, uh, pretty uh, obvious there. So, um, what is the name? Uh, behind the horror mean and how did you come up with that this is like uh because we always like to by that time we were very influenced by rpg stuff and also what those books were writing about um different stuff happening in a world that you see with your eyes like uh i don't know if you're like familiar with vampire the masquerade and all that underworld rpg stuff oh yeah but to be to be honest with you i play that once a week so yeah oh, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. once a week once or twice a week depending oh yeah you so the, sleep the previous night the so. way that the way they write the stuff that like you have the all what all the mortals see it's very di- different from what's really happening behind the horror, you know? Oh, like, yeah. Like the masquerade. Yeah. yeah it, it's mostly like on this meaning, like you're not, what you see is not what's really uh, there. What it's really there and what's behind, like behind the horror lies, the, lays the truth. Yeah. It's something like that. That's like, where the the philosophy of the of the name and, and the weed that comes <laughs> <laughs> and then it's the uh you um the other day i was showing one of our songs to a friend of mine which is a a drum um it's a it's, he's uh my student i've been teaching drums to him and uh, i show one song and he was saying like he he mentioned that it, it it sounded the lyrics sounded very inspirational and uh it's like that's that's inspirational because we discuss and most of the time we're looking for the meaning of things of so much horrific things happening in this world and if you look behind it there's a truth out there there's there's something behind every horrific thing that you see and then we can go on and conspiracy theories and all that shit but you know it's that simple behind the horror lays the truth it's 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 just like that for us it's yeah and also uh we try to write the lyrics in the same meaning like if you're gonna check our because we're very influenced for games and not just like the uh, the gaming part but 
from the whole lore and the, the process of writing the lore. Because our, our, our first EP, we have like um, Wrath of God and Damnation, which is like two cards from Magic the, Magic Gathering. the Gathering. Oh, damn. Yeah, and it's like they both has the same effect, which is destroy, destroy all creatures. But one is black, like two mana and two mana white, and the other is two mana and two mana black. But they have the same effect. And then, like, we made those trying to, in the in one song, illustrates everything being destroyed by... Uh, white stuff like in the meaning of the uh, mana of the fl- white mana yeah of light of you know and we made damnation like describing how everything could be from the dark side the same the... stuff but with using black mana or like that kind of philosophy yeah. oh yeah for sure so that's kind of the the process of kind of writing lyrics is that kind of those types of yeah and intertwine and... with all the concept with the band name and we try to like make something cool of everything yeah. together. That's awesome. So, as far as like live shows, what are you uh, what are you doing nowadays? As far as uh, playing playing out, or what's the what's on the agenda for that? And how does that how does a behind the horror show look like? What, what does it look like nowadays? Well, kind of. Th- this is our challenge now because we're we we got our everything set up we got our studio we have like our own chain of production uh, on this like sound wise very set up but the shows live here as a local band you basically have to pay to play and doing that like a couple times we figure out is not very it's not very good use of money if you're gonna like invest in something those kind of things not very good and here and there we're like making some shows when like the good opportunity comes but so far we're setting up our studio to be like um uh, uh live stream yeah, platform gonna, yeah we're gonna like perform live but streaming from twitch we're gonna be on twitch and uh, we didn't set up a schedule yet but at least once a month we're gonna be appearing there and showing showing up for for our fans, for our our community, and building up a fan base through that, and um, which is basically we're gonna be playing for the whole world from our home, which oh. is I, I think it's amazing because we we don't we don't have to to be dealing with a, a third party to be you know to be doing a concert to be showing out or yeah not, nothing nothing like playing playing like live live in a, in a show but it's so like because we don't have that kind of draw to like get to a place and like fill it up that place even like 300 people there so if you're gonna like spend money with gas spend money with like uh paying for the tickets spend money with everything around going to a concert we rather like take like 300 bucks and put in ads or like just buy a new microphone so we can have like a or a new camera that we can like keep doing content and keep doing live stuff but not depending on a venue or on a agent or that kind of stuff that it's like getting us hooked oh that's cool so as far as like the the uh, newest album what was the process of like writing that and recording it. Well, that, that we've been doing like recording this album uh, for seven years, I guess. Uh, I wouldn't say recording, recording, yeah. but uh, it, producing the whole thing. Yeah, because uh, we wrote all of all of the songs when we were in, back in the back in what back before when I was living in Brazil. So we finished all the writings there. There was just some details and over the years... Yeah, because the immigration process took like kind of seven years to to be done since we like setting everything. It's like a very expanded stuff to do. Like you have like to 
pay a lot of money and do a lot of stuff. And by that time, we were separated and we were like producing the album, like sending Reaper files online and doing that kind of stuff. But we kind of have basically the whole thing already wrote it. But but after all that, after seven years of a lot of stuff that we've been doing, we finished the records here in the U.S., And we finished the mix and master with like a guy called John Seymour uh, in New Jersey. And we recorded the vocals there and he did the master and the, the, the mix. mixing. And uh, the way we paid him, because since uh, we were doing floors, <laughs> we exchanged service. We did the, the floors at his house because he was in need of a renovation. And we was in we were in need of uh mix and mastery and the vocals to be recorded. And that's that was how yeah. how will we pay how we paid for it. Oh that's cool. Yeah. So how did uh how did you be decide to become more of a two piece? I know that is a it is more of a a thing nowadays. There are a lot more two piece bands and many of them are very good. So what it, what led to the process of of deciding upon that like as as far as going forward or if that is that do you plan to get more members or yeah i think since the beginning we were like always the um, the root of the band we we started being like a four guy band but one of the guitars guitar players like left and then we were having trouble finding a bassist even back then And then w when it was like a, a big chance, we got a, like a big show coming and our bassist just like at the moment left the band. So we're just like, oh, fuck that. We're going to just like play two it's, guys. It's and I always been playing like eight string guitars and I was already like trying playing a way that I can feel the Uh, filling the like the bass parts with the eight and strings. I, I add more bass drum on the on the songs. Yeah, and then it just happened. So and we, we got comfortable with it. Yeah, it's, since it's like it's it's so easier when you have just two people to do everything, and we get everything like compact. When once we go when we go play live, we're a party of two, and we. Only two persons. We set up our stage like in less than 10 minutes and we're ready to play. And we've seen bands like with five guys. <laughs> They take like half hour to put all their equipment on the stage. And uh, everything is so simple and easy to deal with with two people. Yeah, and technology is being helping us a lot too because we we got the whole... We got a whole setup here using Reaper Live. Uh, I don't know if you know about Reaper. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, so we use Reaper Live, and we have like uh, ba some back backing, backing tracks, tracks, like running. We have like cool effects, and, and we play always on the click. We have like the whole uh, in ear thing, and all like DUI cheap stuff. Reaper on a laptop. I use Interface. like v VS, like. Um, Uh, a plugin for guitar. I don't even you like carry an amp. I just like use the 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 PA system on the house. It's pretty easy. So that's, yeah, that's, definitely. And maybe on the future we do like some uh, special invitation. Yeah, because you know? we're we're in a process that like we're writing all the 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 songs and we're gonna have everything ready to go for anybody who wants to play can play. Because let's say if you're gonna do a tour, we we can layer like three guitars and have like one bassist and like a, a saxophonist doing something else. Like everybody can play. If me and my brother are playing like the the root of the stuff, oh, that's awesome. So what are you working on right now? As far as uh, are you working on another album or? You know, no, the last one came out in 2020. So yeah, we uh. We are working on relaunching the, the, the last album, the Burn Up This Truth. And, uh, we're gonna do soon. We're gonna be posting out dates for the, for relaunching because we wanted to do a, a bigger campaign. And you have a, like, a, a official video clip that we made after the pandemic. So we're gonna 
since we're like we're not like that famous, so if you're gonna real, it's not like a relaunch. We're gonna like big, do a bigger launch because yeah. now we have like a really cool video. I don't know if I send you the 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 link, but we're gonna do like the um, the marketing around that video because it works best. So yeah, awesome. we have now we have a PR working with us, and uh, we're setting up dates for launching a single, and then you know all that that process of uh, organized release of an album and uh we've been working on the on organizing the the projects and soon we're going to be rehearsing and uh playing the full album in uh in the live stream awesome yeah. yeah i mean you guys sound amazing the production really uh, impressed me too and i always say that when that when i find a band that uh has that kind of quality to it so i mean that, uh, that's appreciate really cool Yeah, that takes a lot of effort for us because you know we got to find out everything by ourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that was the the most difficult thing. That it wasn't even like get everything together, but have the 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 time to do that because once we got the everything around our lives figure out that the album was like really quick to to finish and then just do the touch-ups and we're just waiting for the time to launch but and we wanted to put like something out in 2020 so we just did it but we're just gonna do it again with a video clip it's gonna be way cooler <laughs> yeah that's awesome so i do i ask this each, each interview i do i just like to ask this kind of question these kinds of questions and this is probably going to take up a lot of the i don't know the zoom is giving me only 40 minutes i probably need to subscribe or something i don't know what they're doing but um wow. i could always call back too but um i always ask this question so i guess it'll be a little bit longer if you each could recommend five underrated albums and then five underrated movies what would you recommend mm. if you could think of that underrated. albums uh i have one on top of my mind which is born again from i was Black about Sabbath. to say that one it's like i it, for us both because we bought that album and it was like a cd with that Well, I think it was the it, first metal album we bought. Ah, uh, yeah, it was like the 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 red baby and the blue background, and that song is well, like I think it's really awesome. Don't blame me, don't blame me, don't judge me, but I would say Santanger as well. Santanger, yeah, I like I like, I like the way Santanger sounds, and as I I listen to it a lot, and I got used to the way. Oh, Santanger, okay, yeah, Santanger. And oh. the way it's a different structure of songs and music, but I, I like it. I think it's, I think it's 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 a good album. Yeah, I mean, I I have gotten a lot of flack for <laughs> any defense of that album, but I don't know. It just has this very weird rhythmic quality I've always liked, and I think it was the last. To in my opinion, it was the last time Lars. This is just my opinion. Lars did something like had. It seems to have more passion. Like if you watch the uh, DVD that came with it, uh -huh. like he just had like this passion about the drumming that I don't think he's had as much since. That's just what I saw, but that's just yeah. Awesome. Because there you can see he was like, oh, he 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 engineering that whole stuff that happened in that drum and the, the that drum for that album. Everybody recognizes that drum, like. If you hear that snare, everybody knows that snare is from San Anger. And that's yeah, that's true. It's that's very and, and the interesting. An interesting thing is that tool, the band tool. There's a lot of songs that Danny use the same type of snare drums, but tool is a different type of music. It's metal, but uh, it's another type of music. But on I'm Metallica, not... it didn't it didn't end up too well for a lot of people. But I like it. I I don't. Another band that is underrated for me, it's Manowar. I love Manowar. Like Brothers of Metal, for me, it's like a, like a hymn. Uh, they're not underrated, are they? Yeah, uh, I think they are. Like I they're think they're underrated. underrated. I actually have a Manowar yeah. tattoo. So, ah, oh, yeah, <laughs> I have, I have a, a T-shirt, and everybody like when you say Manowar, ah, oh, like they make fun of Manowar, but I think Manowar is awesome. But it's they play the hugest festivals in the world, and everyone goes. Like Nickelback, everybody makes fun of Nickelback, and I kind of <laughs> like 
there are some songs I, I play and they work for me when I was like getting chicks and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. So uh, they are good to the mic. Not as Manowar because like we have Brothers of Metal as like a name of our like kind of metal group here. So it's really, really important. And about movies, movies. All, I think all the movies that I watch is like underrated because <laughs> I like, I don't know. I, I like can't... Boruto. Uh huh. Yeah, I like anime and that, and that stuff. But, oh, yeah. I just bought, uh, what did I buy? Oh, Gundam or a bunch of Gundam stuff from back in the day, like the early, like the late 70s. Yeah. Ones. Yeah. And everybody, yeah. like a lot of people talk shit about anime too, but it is what it is. Movies. I can't, I can't think about movies. I like. I think the last movie I watched was the, the last movie, like. The the metal move. What's the name? The, the uh, metal lord. Metal lord. I but that was a really good movie. Everyone loved. it. Yeah, yeah. Of course, that was the last. I, I like Adam Sandler. Movie. His movies. Everyone is <laughs> underrated him, but I like it. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. So if you have to uh, like tell a person that hasn't heard your music, what should they listen to first as far as uh, albums or songs or like particular songs? Obviously you're doing a video too, or you've done a video. Mm -hmm. So I would say Damnation from our first EP is one that like starts straight over and has all the, it's have it has everything we got. Like it has a trashy part. It has a, like a, a very good prog prog part in the 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 middle part in uh like a really cool outro and from the burn up this truth i would say burn up this truth yeah i would say burn up this truth yeah. it's gonna be our single we need to pump that music up <laughs> everyone gotta listen to that song if you're not listening to that song man you are behind the most epic metal underground band in the world. Yeah, he's oh, very absolutely. excited. You yeah. gotta listen to you that. Gotta be song. excited like that. Yep. Yeah. Listen to "Burn Up This Truth." Uh, you can't cut this part and put like in a commercial. It's gonna be good. <laughs> yeah, I'll do. No, I will definitely uh, get some <laughs> stuff out. So, yeah. So, what what links uh, do you? Or if you want to give out the links to your music, what would that be? Uh, or what is what is that? I'm gonna. Uh, I would say just behind the horror dot net. You like that's the best place you're gonna find us. Like that, it's a link you can find us in Instagram. But it's basically behind the horror dot net. That's it. And like, if you put on Google behind the horror band, and we're gonna show up yeah. on whatever it's favorite for you yeah i saw that when i when i googled it so yeah but we're trying to set up everything to go to our official website because you never know when they're gonna ban you from well, i i don't know saying something or like posting something yeah it's kind of a scary time with all that stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, to, not going too far into that stuff but yeah it's it's we're going to a way that we're like trying to get like people's emails so we can reach to them like in the more direct stuff than like be relying on on like other platforms yeah. to be in contact with your fan base imagine that like they just shut down your instagram you're not a model anymore <laughs> mm, yeah i got some warnings on some videos a couple times <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep we have yeah. these too Happens to everybody of all all sorts of points of view now. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. So. That's why now like we're going directly to your email. We're gonna that's behind the heart net. Yeah, that's a that's a good way because you you know building a mailing list and stuff is very uh, yeah, very I, business savvy thing to do. So and it gets to a point that uh because we never before we we saw we watched like a video of somebody oh we should have like an email marketing thing i was never like paying attention to my emails and then like oh emails they're really good and like it's part of a process i think I, more people are getting into that too cuz i i think i we're like kind of the same age we basically 
got invented during the social media boom and we I don't use email. I, I not like was used to use email like as a communication purpose. Oh, absolutely. I guess I'm going to conclude it there. It was great talking to you guys. Um, I highly recommend your music. It has a fresh kind of sound to it. I mean, it has like a lot of dynamics and, you know, kind of, it kind of has a lot of twists and turns, which I always like. You guys mentioned death as an influence too, right? Death. Yeah, I remember. So. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for having us. It was like a pleasure talking to you. And once we got everything relaunched again, we're definitely going to come back. We want to show the, the video. And that's it. Thank you so much for everything. It was a nice, nice to, uh, was nice meeting you. And I hope we can talk soon again once we relaunch that we've been launching the video clips and keeping oh, everyone. Definitely.